been 10 years since the tragic events of 9-11-2001. Every American who is old enough to realize the events of September 11, 2001 has had that day etched into his or her mind forever. You hug your sons and daughters, your mothers and fathers, a little bit stronger and a little more, more closely tonight. And remember that today marks a 10th anniversary for some who do not have that luxury, but instead is an anniversary for an empty seat at the dinner table. We pulled together. We rode a national wave of patriotism and belief in our country and what we stand for. But as we face those current and future challenges, I encourage us all to pull from our memory banks the collaboration, the cooperation, and the civility that we all demonstrated following the 9-11 attacks. And we will move on. God bless America.
morning. Thank you for joining us here at downtown Reading. I'm James Bonzoli. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, thank you. Thank you for everybody who's participating, and thank you for your involvement. I specifically, we would like to acknowledge or thank a um, surprise visit from the Bunker Hill Pipe Band, uh, who rushed over here from Tewksbury. They are the, also the official pipe band for uh, the Dropkick Murphys, so they were uh, busy last night, so thank you for joining us. It's been 10 years since the tragic events of 9-11-2001, a day that we must never forget, and we have days like this, so we never do. On that day, it was a day much like this, crystal clear blue skies. We all went to work, we all went to school, happy, content, thinking that nothing was wrong. Sadly, tragically, it was all changed forever. I hope that you use today as a time of reflection and that we continue to recognize 9-11 as a day of reflection. This morning at 10 a.m., we dedicated a memorial at the Reading Memorial High School just for that. A reflection that the students may enjoy, sit in peace, and reflect. I hope everybody will go down, see this memorial with the four granite benches and the two memorials marking the passing of Kevin McCarthy, who was lost in the to towers 10 years ago, and all the lives lost. We've had so much support, love from the state on a daily basis, and especially during events like this. And so it's with great pleasure, I'm honored to present to you Congressman John Tierney. Thank you, Jim. 10 years after four jets infected with a total of 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists changed all of our lives, three years after the Pentagon Memorial was dedicated, one day after Flight 93 National Memorial was unveiled, and on the very day that the World Trade Center Memorial is opened, we all gather here. Every American who is old enough to realize the events of September 11, 2001, has had that day etched into his or her mind forever. All will remember, but none more so than the families and friends of those almost 3,000 who died on that day. Many know someone who is now deceased or had a loved one die. Most know of someone who is so deeply affected. Their stories and the memorials erected ensure that we'll never forget. The courage and the bravery of the deceased, their families, and the legions who work for rescue and all of those since 9-11 who tried to support the survivors constitute a legacy of one America, of a united response to a horrible tragedy. Locally in this district, we have a number of friends and families who never forget and who come together on this anniversary day to make the collective statement of support for those who have lost loved ones and a statement of resilience for all Americans. That we shall redouble our efforts to make this country worthy of the sacrifice of so many that we shall strive to make the world a better place for their children and our children. And as Graham Allison said in Saturday's paper when he quoted George Washington, who was at the verge of losing the colonial forces to the British, perseverance and spirit have done wonders in all ages. And so we gather here today for all of the families, including the McCarthy's Reading Zone and Reading High School Zone. And so many others locally and throughout the country who had their memories kept alive in ways that are elegant in their simplicity and in their thoughtfulness. That mirrors the kindnesses generated by Americans toward those families and toward each other since 9-11. It reflects the acts of all those in the rescue effort and all those who have been in the military since then in service of our nation. Quietly, almost unnoticed, people everywhere, often led by those who suffered the most, have shown such courage and grace by doing positive, selfless acts for others since that fateful day. They've reached out in attempts to resolve controversies or seek peaceful resolutions to conflicts here or abroad. One survivor from our area 
It was even dedicating time and money and efforts to assist Afghan women. They've helped educate, helped others heal, and express tolerance. They've tried to bring healing and comfort to others. And in these challenging times for America, as we remember these brave souls, let their sacrifices and everyone's perseverance and spirit do wonders in this age. Let us bring back, together once again, a united in a new resolve to be part of a better America for them, for our, us, and for our children. Thank you. And I'd now like to invite State Senator Catherine Clark. Thank you. It is truly an honor to be here with you today as we mark the 10th anniversary of that tragic day, September 11th, 2001. I know we all will never forget, it is seared into our collective memories, where we were that day. When I first heard of uh, a plane going into the tower, I was dropping off my two uh, children at that time, my two oldest boys at daycare. and. By the time I had reached my office, the plane in the Pentagon had hit, and it felt like the world was collapsing around us. And I remember trying to get back to my children to pick them up and bring them home, and it felt like we were running underwater. And yet, for me, it was, they were safe, and they were home, and that wasn't the experience for so many of the families that we know, uh, for so many of you who lost friends and loved ones on that tragic day. We remember our grief and profound sadness. We remember the thousands of Americans that were injured and killed, and the selfless acts of heroism that the first responders showed, and everyday citizens who risked their lives and in so many cases gave their lives so that others would have the chance to survive. And here in Reading, we acknowledge not only a national tragedy, but a very personal one. I was so privileged to be at the ceremony at the high school this morning that honored Kevin McCarthy, who lost his life in the Twin Towers, and also all those who lost their life on that fateful day 10 years ago. And to hear his family describe him, and also to talk about all the occasions that he has missed, the baptisms, the weddings, the birthdays, the birth of nieces and nephews, the college graduations, brought home the impact of just one of the many thousands of lives that we lost. We had many responses to 9-11 and in the days that came. Anger, despair, grief, disbelief. And at the same time, we pulled together. We rode a national wave of patriotism and belief in our country and what we stand for. You came together, you volunteered, you raised money, you supported each other. I witnessed countless acts of compassion and kindness and generosity from every corner of this town and of this state. And the truth is, you had every reason to turn inward after that tragic day, but you didn't. You did not allow our anger and our rightful desire for revenge to win. Instead, you saw our common humanity and embraced one of the most fundamental tenets of our democracy, that our neighbor's well-being is as vital as our own. 10 years later, as we struggle in this economy with high rates of unemployment and the horror of two wars, our losses may be more quiet and more private than those of 10 years ago today, but they still raise the same emotions. Our faith is again being challenged. So I hope that today we remember and carry forward that spirit of community that we had right after these horrifying events. The recognition that we are, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, tied in a single garment of destiny. I hope we come together, as Reading always does, to challenge ourselves to build a stronger, safer, more compassionate, more just and equal community. And our ability to do that will truly represent the legacy of September 11th. 
I know we're up to the challenge, and I hope we can recommit ourselves to seeing our shared values, respecting our differences, while not being defined by them. This is Reading's tradition, and it's our country's. And to do so truly honors the memory of those we've lost. I hope that God blesses those we've lost, the families who remain and grieve, and continue to bless Reading, our Commonwealth, and our nation. Thank you very much for your presence here today. Thank you, Catherine. As I said, we've had so much support from the state level. We have two state representatives here who support writing for us, talking for us, state level. Fortunately, state rep Jim Dwyer is unable to join us this morning, but he sends his love and his support. But now I'd like to introduce our state rep, Brad Jones. Thank you and good morning. Each of us that was old enough remembers that fateful day, September 11th, 10 years ago, when suddenly the disagreement over dinner the night before did not matter anymore. September 11th, 2001 became one of those days, those very few days where you will always remember where you were and what you were doing when it all happened. The details may become a little less clear as time goes by, unless, of course, you're one of those families whose lives forever altered that day. As a nation and as individuals, we came to know in all too painful, emotional, gut-wrenching detail that evil exists. But so too did we come to know that courage and bravery exist in the face of it. There are countless stories we all know of passengers, firefighters, police officers, Pentagon workers and office workers, who made decisions and took actions to help others with little or no regard for themselves. We also know in our hearts that there are countless stories of such bravery we may never hear of, but that we know exist. As we confronted the evil that was perpetrated on us, we came together as a nation with a unity of spirit and purpose. We were united in our efforts to heal, to help, and to respond. September 11th, like only a few other events in our nation's history, served to renew our sense of purpose and reinvigorate the abiding truth that that which unites us as Americans is so much greater than that which divides us. Sadly, some of that sense of purpose has ebbed. Hopefully, it will not be another tragedy before we can embrace it again. The legacy of the, fall, legacy of the fallen we honor today deserves our best efforts to do so. To paraphrase, paraphrase Abraham Lincoln, who said it so eloquently at Gettysburg almost a century and a half ago, the world will little note, no long remember what we say here, but it can never forget the events of September 11th. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the sense of purpose and the national unity which they who sacrificed so much so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. And as I leave the podium this morning, I would ask just one thing of each and every one of you, that you hug your sons and daughters, your mothers and fathers, a little bit stronger, a little more, more closely tonight. And remember that today marks the 10th anniversary for some who do not have that luxury, but instead is an anniversary for an empty seat at the dinner table. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you. That was beautiful. Well, on the unique and sad tragedies of events of 9-11 for me is the fact that it was truly about the first responders rushing in there to save lives, not, not thinking twice of what they were running into and the fact that many, many would not be coming out of those buildings. I want to thank leadership of Reading, Chief Cormier, Chief Burns, on a daily basis, keeping us safe and out of harm's way. I also want to thank, thank you, Sergeant McKenna, who's led our colors this morning and has helped me organize the troops. I also want to thank the Reading Fire Department, who lost so many brothers on this day 10 years ago. And they're joined by their brothers. In, in showing of true community and unitedness. They're joined today by uh, Wilmington Reading Fire Department, also in the Color Guard. <laughs> Ten years ago today, it started a chain of events that would change this nation forever, as you've heard. And so many men and women have been called up. I'd like to acknowledge Captain Mavi and the Massachusetts National Guard. You may notice their colors are not with them this morning because they are actually deployed in Afghanistan. So our hearts, our thoughts, and prayers go out today and their family members that they may have a safe return home. As I start off, today is about reflection. It means a lot for different people, it means different things to different folks. And to represent the uh, Reading Police Department and the police departments around the world, I give to you Chief Cormier. Congressman Tierney, Senator Clark, Representative Jones, honorable members of the Reading Board of Selectmen, elected and appointed officials, fellow citizens. It is a great honor to have been asked to speak today on the anniversary in order to pay tribute to the 10 year anniversary of September 11, 2001. 10 years ago, we experienced a multi pronged terrorist attack that amounted to an attack and amounted to an act of war against our country. Collectively, some 3,000 innocent souls, including 343 firefighters and 72 police officers, perished at the World Trade Center in New York City, at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and in a field in Pennsylvania. This is a day that will never be forgotten by those of us that were old enough to comprehend the enormity and the senselessness of that tragic series of events. I have had the distinct privilege of being able to have visited two of the three sites of the attacks. Myself, along with Sergeant David Clark, were dispatched to New York City shortly after the attacks to assist there. This assignment was a coordinated effort in conjunction with the New York City Incident Commanders and coordinated through the Concerns of Police Survivors Organization. We were prepared to assist in any way necessary. Upon our arrival, our, assign our assignment generally was in a transportation role as we were equipped with a large multi-passenger van. In our transportation capacity, we were exposed to the devastation the city of New York experienced up close and personal. I can never forget the acrid smell and complete neighborhood destruction at Ground Zero. 
I will not forget the emotion I experienced when viewing the walls plastered with posters made by family and friends pleading for help in locating those people unaccounted for in the attacks. I cannot erase from my mind the look of despair and helplessness on the faces of those people in the giant warehouse building along the Hudson River. This warehouse was transformed into a place where people who needed assistance in the wake of the, of the attacks could come and find an array of resources available to them. The building was full every day and I can still see the faces of those people so desperate for help. The trip to New York City in the aftermath of September 11th, 2001 was a, was a life impacting trip for me. I have also been privileged to have visited the Pentagon in Washington DC and have experienced the very moving memorial that was erected there. During my visit to the Pentagon, I was fortunate to have participated in a tour that was led by a person who was at the Pentagon in the day of the attacks. The tour guide was able to relay in great detail the devastation that was suffered there. In a part of the country where history and monuments abound, the Pentagon attack is now a major part of the history in Washington, D.C. We are all acutely aware of the tragedy, devastation, and loss suffered on September 11th, 2001. Not to detract from the magnitude of that tragic day, I'd like to take an opportunity to reflect on something positive that may have come out of the attacks on 9-11. In the days following the attacks, while we all experienced a sense of shock and disbelief, very subtly, a transition occurred. Citizens everywhere took stock of the situation and attempted to understand what had happened in our country. I noticed in these days, weeks, and months following the attacks, a renewed sense of community, a new sense of cooperation, an uptick in civility. People across the country were pulling together. They were looking out for each other. We were helping their neighbors and being courteous to one another. If you remember, in the moments immediately following the attacks, the Federal Aviation Administration closed United States airspace. Some 5,000 planes were landed within one hour, safely. Life, as we were accustomed to, shut down for a period of time, while the authorities evaluated the situation. I mentioned the planes being landed because people were stranded. Planes were landed where they were, sometimes very big airplanes in very small airports. People were stuck in places where they had no ties nor knew anyone. But story after story came to light about how these stranded travelers were taken in and cared for by perfect strangers. This is just one example of the people coming together and working together to get through difficult times and caring and helping for one another. In my position, I have had the opportunity to witness our community during the times following 9-11 and during other trying and difficult times. I am proud to say that I have seen our community numerous times come together and work to overcome very difficult situations. But as life continues to place its demands on us, we all tend to get caught up in our daily lives and return back to our typical routines. Our community will continue to face challenges hopefully never again of the magnitude of September 11, 2001. But as we face those current and future challenges, I encourage us all to pull from our memory banks the collaboration, the cooperation and the civility that we all demonstrated following the 9-11 attacks. As Henry Ford, the great industrialist said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, Working together is success. Thank you for your time. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you, Chief. To represent the Reading Fire Department, I call Firefighter Robert Beck.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. When I was first asked to speak today, um, I thought about writing something down, but the day doesn't deserve that. The thoughts about what happened 10 years ago can't be put down on paper. Like so many of us, I can remember that day like it happened yesterday. And I think for my generation, it is gonna be, that day will be what President Kennedy being assassinated, or the day that Pearl Harbor was attacked was for other generations. I was at Wakefield Fire. I was speaking with uh, Chief Dave Pa that day, and one of the firefighters said, you better come in here and see this. We went in and on the television, we saw the smoke rising from the tower. We thought that it was a stray plane, a civilian aircraft. And then suddenly the second plane came into view. And there wasn't a sound. No one spoke. We all just stood there looking at that going, my God, what just happened? We're under attack. The chief said, you better go to your department. America's under attack. I reported to the fire station. The chief said, we're just gonna stand down. We don't know what's happened yet. Then suddenly the Pentagon was hit. Then flight 93. We knew we were in trouble. And then the towers fell and everything changed. Our thoughts immediately went to our brother firefighters in New York City. What were they thinking that day? The bells go off and we climb on the trucks and we respond, never knowing what we're going to. That day as they were driving down the road, they could see the towers in the distance, the smoke rising from them. I heard a deputy chief was quoted as in the lobby was saying, we knew it was bad. We knew we were gonna lose firefighters, but we had to do something. There was 25,000 people that needed our help. We had to do something. So our brothers from FDNY went forward and they did their job. And they got more than 25,000 people out of those buildings before they came down. After the towers fell, myself and all the rest of the firefighters from my community and all the others wanted nothing more than to be in downtown New York City. We wanted to go, we prepared ourselves. I went to the school and said goodbye to my daughter. And we got the call. FDNY called, they wanted us down there. But our mission was much greater. They wanted us to say goodbye to their brothers. Whenever a firefighter dies in the line of duty, firefighters from all across the country gather to honor the memory of that firefighter. People often ask, why would you go to a funeral for someone you don't know? Simple reason is they do it for me. So we traveled to New York City. The firefighters who you see assembled, the firefighters who are protecting our town today, firefighters from all the communities around here, we would gather at two in the morning, get on a bus, drive to New York, say goodbye to one of our brothers at a funeral, go to a funeral in the afternoon, get home at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, work your shift and do it all again. And that's how, our, that's how our days and weeks were spent. And it was amazing that of the enormity of 9-11, little things still come back. I can remember walking to Ground Zero with firefighters Brian Ryan and Paul Roy and Bobby Jutras, and we must have walked half a mile and there was nothing. The buildings were destroyed. There was dust everywhere. The cars, the windows were blown out. There wasn't a soul until we got down to that site. And I can remember one day that will never leave me we were in Staten Island. We were saying goodbye to a fallen firefighter. And we learned that one of his other loves, besides his job and his family, was music. So his friends had gathered and they were playing the music that he loved. He was in a band. And as we sat outside listening to that music, we could have closed our eyes and we could have been at the hat shell. Or we could have been on Boston's waterfront. And suddenly we were called to order. The family was leaving. So that long blue line of firefighters lined up and as the limousine went by, a little hand 
was waving out the window. She couldn't have been more than three. I did not want to be anywhere else but home at that point. That's where my thought went. I needed to get home. Mm -hmm. I had to see my girls. I had to see my wife, Teresa, my daughter, Victoria, and my daughter, Heather. I wanted out of there. The ceremony was over. We went to the coalition, but I was in no mood. That's not where I wanted to be. I needed to get home. So we returned home, and I saw my family. And we continued on. And that's how the Reading firefighters honored our brothers. At this point, I would ask firefighter Paul Demacogno to step forward, please. In the history of the Fire Department of New York, we ring the bell 555 five, five, to honor a fallen firefighter. In closing, I know over the last several weeks and months, there's been a lot of talk on whether it was appropriate to have a town fair on the same day as this day. I think it's absolutely appropriate. I to say we gathered this morning, we remembered those we lost, we honored our brothers who were heroes who gave so much that day. And then this afternoon, we're gonna move forward with our family, our friends, and we're gonna celebrate. And we're not gonna let them win. Because if we did not do this, they won. If we stayed home and we didn't do it, they won. I heard it said this morning up at the Common and several other times, let freedom ring. They're not gonna get us down. We will move forward, we will celebrate with our family and friends, and we will move on. God bless America.
cannot truly mourn or celebrate without music. I want to thank the Reading Community Singers under the guise of Beth Mosier. Accompanied by Joe Beninati. You think being an Italian, I would have done a better job. So thank you. I do ask, has there been anyone here who's lost a loved one on 9-11, who's willing to participate with the releasing of the doves? No worries. We'll do it anyway. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to read a poem, which we will then be followed by a moment of silence, or followed by the releasing of the doves, moment of silence, an amazing grace by the bagpiper, which will be our, our exit. <clears throat> this poem was given to me it was written by Johnny Vaughn. Doves, the sign of innocence, purity, and peace. Hope of a brighter future, love that will not cease. God's gift to his children, beauty on the fly. A promise he has given us that will never die. Special to the little ones and those in need. All who look upon them will stop and take heed. Only ten short years ago, evil stalked our land, killing innocents and children who could not understand. Insanity was evident in what had been done, and judgment will be given by God's only Son. Peace is his greatest wish, brought to us by the dove, and his greatest command is for us to love. He doesn't want us to drop our guard and stand weakly by. Just like the dove he sent us, he wants our flag to fly. The tears of the little ones, the suffering and loss, the mothers and the fathers, all those who paid the cost. That their spirits might be raised, much like this little bird, for evil shall not triumph, and that is in God's word. The sight of these doves flying just like angels on wing will strike wonder to the children and make needful hearts sing. Peter, yes, firefighter. A moment of silence.
firefighter Beck said, we mourn, we live, and we love. So join us this afternoon for a family, uni, community gathering with the Fall Street Fair. At this podium, there will be an award ceremony for the road race that took place this morning. So I hope you enjoy the day, enjoy your families, enjoy your, love, your neighbors, and thank you for coming.